my goal is to, first of all, not say that this is the end-all, be-all, um, because the church has been around a lot longer than the intranets, but my hope is that you walk out of here with, oh, yeah, there we go. My hope is that you walk out of here with a couple practical things that uh, can help you uh, interact in the 21st century a little bit better. So uh, I'm just going to fly through these. I have 10 tips in 10 minutes, and then hopefully we have time for a bonus tip. My first one is, number one, I want you to have a personal and an organizational social media. So what I mean by this is we have our own Facebook, our own Twitter, whatever it is. Uh, you should also have one for your ministry. If you have junior high and high school, have two. If you have one for all of them, have one for all of them. Use them differently. Now, here's what I mean by that. Personal interaction with students from you is like super important. I think all of us would agree with that. Um, remember birthdays, like a picture, even chatting, commenting, things like that. Those are huge. This is their language, right? We want, we want to interact on their terms a little bit. Um, if you want to, whoop, that was interesting. If you want a student to feel loved, uh, don't forget their birthday. That's a tip, right? If you post on every kid's wall, happy birthday, that's all you have to do. Do it for every single one. Um, and the days of forgetting a student's name are over with if you're hanging out with them on social media because their name's right in front of you. Here, here's a huge benefit. Your social media presence does, your, your ministry social media presence does not depend on you. Every one of us are aware of the average lifespan of a youth worker. It's less than two years. So if you... Uh, are loving all your kids on Facebook through your personal Facebook or social media, and all of a sudden you find yourself at a new church for whatever reason, that ministry doesn't have to die because they're interacting with your ministry pages, social media presence. Um, organizational posts are super important. What, um, never personally create an event for your ministry. I see a lot of uh, buddies of mine in youth ministry being like, hey, we're having summer camp and it's my personal event that I create on Facebook or something like that. Uh, don't do that because here's the deal. Again, it rises and falls on you and not on your ministry or your brand or whatever it is that you're trying to develop on social media. And I'll talk about that in a second. Um, but what you can do is you can share your ministry pages status or update or event on your own personal page. And it's a great way to get click throughs into your ministry page. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. Uh, but here's my, my real reason why I want you to do this because all your friends who are not part of your youth ministry hate that you're posting on Facebook. Hey, come to this, come to that, come to this thing. We're, we're annoyed by that, and we would like for you to not do that. So have your ministry page, do your ministry updates, and if you want to share that every once in a while with the entire world, fine, especially as a way of bridging that gap from your friends with me on Facebook to now your friends with my ministry. Um, so have a personal and an organizational social media presence. Now, number two, I want you all to just for a second understand the algorithm. Facebook runs off of an algorithm. If you uh, don't well, let me, let me just say this. Clicks on pages, likes, comments, the amount of time you spend viewing a Facebook page, it runs into this really complicated mathematical nuts equation that Zuckerberg came up with where that's how you get a presence in somebody's news feed, okay? Uh, not every single one of your million friends on Facebook show up in your news feed because Facebook tells you what's important to you, okay? Now, did you catch what I just said? If you want to have influence on a student or you want your ministry to have influence on a student, you have to find a way to get into their news feed, okay? So you, um, if you understand that algorithm and you find that you're posting and not a lot of people are seeing what you're posting, you need to find a way to shake things up. That's where you get to use your creative youth worker juices. Um, so the key question you need to be able to answer is, how do I get somebody to interact with my brand? How do I get somebody to... To, to want to talk to my page? How do I get improved influence by gaining content in people's news feeds? Um, and just a tip, you can see who's view, how many people are viewing your, your ministry pages page just in each post as an administrator. Okay, so there's an algorithm. If you want more influence, you need to find a way to get people to touch the algorithm. Okay, number three. Have a fan page, not a group page. Now, there's a difference. A lot of ministries have group pages. A lot of ministries have fan pages. I am a huge fan page advocate, and here's, let me tell you why. Pages are brands. Uh, they're, they're, groups are country club memberships. Okay, what I mean by that is, think of it this way. A visitor to your ministry, right? Little 14-year-old Johnny shows up. 
Um, it's highly unlikely that he's going to come to one midweek program and go, I'm in, sign me up for the rest of my life until revelation comes. I want to be a part of this community, this group I'm in, sign on the dotted line. So to get them to join a group on day one is really, really tough. But what I found is students like the stupidest stuff on Facebook. They will like uh, pictures of cats yelling at dogs. Like they'll, they'll just click like, I like it. And then they'll get it in their newsfeed from now until the end of the universe or until they stop interfacing it with it according to the algorithm. So what I mean to say is a page is far more accessible for your students or your students' friends to just kind of get your foot in the door of their social media and have a little bit of influence and create a little bit of brand recognition with your students. Um, and that means... Uh, having separate pages for separate ministries. Don't have your high schoolers liking a junior high ministry page and vice versa because it's not cool to do that. Also, parents can like a ministry page and it's not weird at all. If a mom and dad joins the youth group page, that's funky, okay? They're like, wait, this is my group. This isn't your group. You go join the church group is what a 14-year-old might say. But if you just like the page, no harm, no foul. Um, in my context, last year we had two ministries. We had a high school ministry called Realm and a junior high ministry called Elevate. And so I had separate content for everything. Now, sometimes I would post both to both pages, but not often. I had junior high specific content, high school specific content. Um, but this last year we decided we were gonna consolidate our staffing resources and time. And so we decided to combine the two ministries into one. I run junior high and high school at the same time. And what we decided to do was we need to rebrand the whole thing rather than call it you know, relevate or something like that. We decided that we were gonna rebrand it completely. We're just gonna call it Trinity Student Ministries, TSM. And so we launched a brand new Facebook page. We did t-shirts, the whole nine yards. And we tried to rebrand ourselves as one combined group. And so kids would go and they would have to like the new, the new page. Um, okay, so tip number four, have a fan page, not a group page. Uh, sorry, tip number three. Tip number four, have a group page, not a fan page. Oh, come on. You have to pay attention. I just said don't do this. Now I'm going to say do it. Here's why. So now that you have people that identify with a brand, okay, that, that say, yeah, I like what you're doing here. I came one time to skate night or in and out night or bowling night and had a good time. I like this, okay? Now that you've gotten a student to do that, now you want to slowly try and develop more, di more direct community online. And one of the best ways to do this is to create a group. Um, we do this in real life, so we call them small groups. We do this online with Facebook groups. I encourage every small group leader in my ministry to have their own private group on Facebook. I'm not a part of it, I don't moderate it, I have nothing to do with it, I ask them to do it. It gives them a little bit of ownership, it's a good thing. If you've got a student leader in your small group, yeah, you can be a moderator and admin on, my, on our you know, freshman boys small group page, or freshman guys small group group, does that make sense? And so what, what this allows for is kids can share prayer requests, hey, I found this funny video, all that kind of stuff, but it doesn't pollute my ministry page, which I have to really pay attention to, so I don't have kids cussing on it, things like that, when they comment on a picture, because that happens. Um, and, and this really, what I found is it develops a sense of I belong to something that's just for me. And so your 15 year, 14 year, or 12 year old, or whatever it is, can say, oh, I, I belong to this group and nobody else has access to that. And so if I've got something going on in my life, I can post about it here because that's their language. They want to post about it somewhere and it's a safe place, a healthier place for them to post about it. Um, da -da -da. I also have a private group for my staff. So my staff are part of a group and I can send out encouragement, updates, last minute things that way. Um, and that's a good thing. You get notifications um, instead of timeline posts or newsfeed posts when you're in a group. So have a group page, not a fan page for your small groups. Number five, tie Twitter to Facebook. And no, I did not just add a second social media interface for you to manage. Um, make Twitter work for you. Here's the majesty of Twitter, especially for your students who don't have smartphones, which uh, I know not every kid has Facebook mobile sitting on their iPhone 5 you know, S or X or whatever they are now, because um, I didn't for the longest time, but ev almost every kid, almost every kid has at least text message capabilities on a cell phone. Now, you might deal with this with sixth graders or seventh graders or even eighth graders who don't have cell phones yet, but it's coming. So um, Twitter does something magical 
where um, it will send text message updates for you for free if you subscribe on a cell phone. So you would go to facebook.com slash Twitter and you can tie any page that you want on, that you manage as an admin on Facebook to any Twitter page that you ad manage as a Twitter page, if that makes sense. It's like, it takes two minutes. It's really, really easy. And what happens is if I post something, uh, it'll show up uh, in a cell phone as a text message if I don't subscribe, if I don't have a smartphone, okay? This is a simple fix. But text messages are beautiful because every kid gets text messages on their phone if they have smartphones too. So if you get them to subscribe to your Twitter feed on their cell phones via text message, whether they have a Twitter or not, They'll get these text message updates, which many of us in this room probably pay for text messages services that send text messages out to our youth group that say, hey, youth groups tonight, show up with a Bible. Well, Twitter does that for free for you if you get a student to subscribe, which is a beautiful thing. Um, so, I, for, example, for example, if you were to text right now, follow at TSM209 to just out into the number 40404, and don't put the quotes on there, you would subscribe to my youth group's Twitter feed. And then if I post this status, how well do you know the Christmas story? Be at TSM tomorrow at 9.45 a.m. to find out, bring a friend. And I click post. In a second here, it'll show up on Facebook in their news feed. But my Twitter, I, I'm subscribed to my own Twitter feed on my cell phone, so I know that the posts go through, just showed up. TSM just tweeted, and it shows up as a text message. So you don't have to have a smartphone to get the updates. Every single one of my kids who subscribes to our Twitter feed just got this reminder. It took me two seconds to do, it's totally free. That's pretty cool. You can do that for a small group, set up a Twitter feed for your small group, anything you want. Um, it's a piece of cake. Number six, get students involved. Have your students tag other students in pictures. Don't go around doing it for them. Um, when you go anywhere, I would highly recommend you have a staff person who loves taking pictures or a student leader who loves taking pictures take their camera, not their cell phone, and snap as many pictures as they possibly can, get as many you know, group shots as you possibly can, and then as quick as you possibly can, upload those to Facebook through your page, not through your own personal Facebook. Again, we're keeping work and private separate. Um, don't spend your time doing it, you'll be there all day. When we go on a camp or a mission trip, uh, I have my computer in the bus on the way home, and I just tell students, hey, bring your iPhone over here. If you snap pictures on the trip, plug it into my computer, because it'll make the camp slideshow if you put it on my computer right now. So kids plug their iPhones in, I download the pictures into iPhoto on my computer or whatever software you're using, and then I make a camp video for my ministry to show at parent night the following week. Nothing goes on Facebook until after they come to parent night, because I want the kids to want to come to see the camp video. Does that make sense? Every kid wants to have their picture in the camp video, so I get all their pictures, and then they get uploaded through the Facebook page. Now, here's the majesty of this. Um, I downloaded Easy Batch Photo. It's an app for my Mac. It watermarks every single picture in the lower right-hand corner with my ministry logo, which I'm, I'm developing a brand of TSM in my case, Trinity Student Ministries. I have this brand logo branded on each picture that goes up online. So when their kids go, oh my gosh, you're on a tire swing at Hume Lake, like doing your crazy thing at summer camp, they're looking at this picture, they see my ministry logo in the corner. Instantly, they're going, that's cool. And that's a positive thing Coca-Cola would tell us. And so, <laughs> hey, brand, like brand management, it's a, big, it's a big deal. Even for our own ministries, you don't want to have this boring picture of you know, Jesus on, the, on his knees praying as your church logo because nobody would think that was cool except if you were super Christian. So um, that is a cool, I, simple way to get your, your ministry logo or whatever in front of them. It cost five bucks. It was super cheap. Um, tweet out a Bible verse in like Twitter lingo, first person to decode it or find the reference on it and tweet back to you. That, that person gets a free whatever, like do contests, um, giveaways, check in a few times, get a free t-shirt, stuff like that. That will add people into the algorithm. It will get them, if you check in at a place, it, they're up, that page's updates, like they show up all the time because you were actually there instead of virtually there. Um, those are good, good ideas. 
Number seven, create a unique ministry hashtag. Everybody Instagrams like crazy. Uh, Instagrabber and Instaplayer from Crowd Control Games allows you to download um, Instagrabber and Instaplayer. If you go to crowdcontrolgames.com, those are two programs. They're $15 a piece. They run Mac or PC. And what it does is, I'll show you real fast. Well, no, I won't. Um, what it does is it allows, where'd it go? Come back, my little friend. Oh, it was there. Uh, what it allows you to do is um, you can type in any hashtag you want and it will, this Instagrabber program will pull all the Instagrams for that hashtag that are not private off the web and will show up on the program. You just click them, they download into a folder that you specify. Then you open up Instaplayer and you click play from that same folder and it creates a slideshow of all of these images scrolling across your screen and it's really cool because you can superimpose your hashtag logo or whatever, your church logo, anything you want on top of it. And so kids, when they come to an event, hey, here's the event hashtag. We just did a big Halloween thing. So our hashtag was CSI 209, Crime Scene Investigation 209 is our area code. And kids would Instagram and their Instagram showed up on the screen. Now when they come to youth group the next week, hey, that's me, I'm on the screen. Every kid loves to see themselves on the screen. It's, it's 15 bucks and it goes with ProPresenter, PowerPoint, anything you want, it works super well. Um, so have a hashtag, uh, that's a good thing. Da -da 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 -da. Have a firm boundary. This is something that I've had to learn the hard way, I think. Um, I learned a valuable lesson from a pastor I used to work with. Students would come to him all the time and say, hey, Sean, what do I do? What time is this? And he, you know what he would say every time, even if he knew the answer? Check the website. That was his like mantra. Check, if he made bumper stickers, check the website would be his bumper sticker. Okay? My mantra is check Facebook. Everything is on Facebook. What time does youth group start? Check Facebook. What time does the event start? It's on Facebook. Everything is on Facebook. Because what you'll see in a second here is 81% of people in our, demogra in, our, in our age demographic of 13 to 18 have Facebook. That's high odds, okay? And it's at a, the best part about it is it's at their fingertips. Um, so I create events for pretty much everything, whether a kid RSVPs to an event or not. When you get within a certain amount of days, like five days of an event, it pops up on your right-hand column right underneath your, your birthdays. So whether you've RSVP'd, yes, I'm coming, or no, I'm not, there's an instant reminder right there. It's better than a flyer. Don't spend money on time on flyers. It's better than a flyer. Um, da -da 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 -da. Most of us don't get to manage our own youth group website 100%. Most of us don't want to do that. Uh, this is a simple way to have your own web page with controllable content. Keep it simple, stupid. Um, that's one of my mantras for that. Tip number nine, have content worth looking at. This is like the most underrated part of, of this. Uh, give subscribers an inside look to your community. Let them actually see what's going on, like action shots of things that are happening. If your kids are up on stage, you know, playing a game, snap a picture, post it to the Facebook page. It's like something that's actually happening. Uh, pictures are better. Um, pictures that have a 39%, I'm sorry, posts that have pictures attached, 39% better interaction rate. 39% than just words. So the post I just did, if I had put a picture of a Christmas ornament with it, because it's a Christmas post, 39% higher interaction rate on average. Short videos are fine. Those, you know, Vine, Instagram, they all inter integrate seamlessly. I'm sure I'm not telling you anything you didn't know about that. If you have a blog, link to it on your Facebook so that your parents who like your ministry page can go read your blog. It's free promotion, free advertisement. You control your space. Um, and parents love to see updates on the youth group page when you're at camp or when you're at a mission trip. Uh, it's awesome for them to see pictures of camp while camp's happening. And uh, so that's a simple way to send those out without having to type up a whole email. And tip number 10, have a strategy. Your strategy doesn't have to be elaborate for your social media presence. It really truly doesn't. Um, in fact, it really should be specific and simple. There's a couple key questions though I want you to ask yourself. What, what's my ministry brand? And that, that's a really big question, but it has a really small answer. What, what, what do I want my presence to say about us? Like, why am I doing this? How do I want my social media to accomplish what I want to accomplish? If you're, if you're trying to get kids to accept Christ through Facebook, 
maybe think about a different focus, right? Like, that, that may not be the most effective strategy of evangelism. Now, if that's yours, hey, m more power to you, go for it. Life Church TV does small groups online. They're brilliant, okay? It can be done. You can have authentic community online. Um, how much time are you willing to devote to social media? That's a question you have to answer. Um, cover photos. Ro rotate them. Don't have the same one. Feature your students. Advertise a sermon series. Do something with your cover photo that is a positive thing used to promote your brand. Uh, and make it comfortable. This is, this is a huge one. Make it comfortable for people who aren't in your community. 